Welding. The process of joining two pieces of steel together with molten metal. The bond created has to be strong enough to withstand the harsh impacts of its environment. The strength of a weld depends on specific characteristics in the weld deposit. Characteristics are controlled through the filler metal or consumable used in the welding process. During welding, the consumable will become molten. Metal droplets are then transferred across the welding arc to form a metallurgical bond between two pieces of metal. Overlooking this crucial aspect in the welding process can have devastating consequences, causing weld defects that lead to weld failure. Several variables must be controlled during welding to produce the required deposit. Operator skill, surface condition, joint preparation, and welding procedure all impact the way a weld will perform. Choosing the right welding consumable can reduce the impact of these other variables and produce welds that not only meet the requirements of the job but exceed them every time. Welding consumables come in the form of stick electrode, solid MIG wire, flux cord wire, and submerged arc wire and flux. All these consumable variations share a common factor that is key to how the consumable performs, raw steel filler metal or green rod. The chemical composition of the green rod has a significant impact on the performance of MIG wire. Steel can contain up to 50 different elements which can produce a wide variation in welding performance. The chemical composition of steel is determined by the raw materials used and how they are processed. Lincoln Electric qualifies steel mills by closely grading how consistent the chemistry of their product is and if they meet our rolling specifications. Lincoln Electric goes beyond this grading process and requires top-ranked steel suppliers to conform to the company's tightly controlled procedures and specifications. Lincoln Electric's specifications begin with raw materials. Steel can be created entirely from iron ore, which is a clean but expensive way to make steel. Alternatively, steel mills can add scrap steel, which is cheaper but may be polluted with unwanted elements like copper and chromium. The steel making process begins when iron is melted in an electric arc furnace. After melting, the furnace is tapped and the molten metal is transferred to a ladle, which is transported to another furnace for refining. After refining, the ladle is transferred to the continuous caster, Shrouding is critical to avoid nitrogen pickup from exposure to the atmosphere during the transfer from the ladle to the caster molds. Unless tightly controlled and monitored, each of these processes can add tramp elements to the molten steel that will alter its chemical composition and welding performance. The resulting steel billets are taken to the rolling mill to be drawn down to a bar of a specific diameter. The rolling process is critical to produce uniform grain structure and desirable surface conditions. Tight control of this process eliminates variations in roundness and hardness that cause the steel to become brittle during the drawing process used to make MIG wire. In addition to all the efforts made with our suppliers to deliver green rod to our purchase specifications, once the material arrives here, we do 100% inspection on every bundle. We will sample and test both ends of every bundle for chemistry. We do that for three reasons. The first reason is it's possible that material is improperly identified. During the manufacturing process, two or three test samples are taken from each heat or 240,000 pounds of molten steel. Results of these tests are averaged and printed on a heat certificate which is attached to every bundle of green rod produced from that heat. There is no governing body that regulates these certificates and no penalty for inaccuracy. If we rely strictly on the vendor's heat tag on material, it's very possible that we could be putting in the wrong chemistry into your product's box. 
We have numerous incidents over the years where through our inspection techniques have found improperly tagged material. Another defect that we find is end-to-end -end variation. When transitioning between two heats of steel with different chemical composition, the end of the first heat can mix with the beginning of the next. The coils that are produced from this mixed heat steel are called transition coils, which may vary in chemical composition from beginning to end. By checking every bundle, we have the ability to grade our material and segregate where it is used. And there's two advantages to that. Internally, if we segregate certain chemistries for certain products, we have the ability to improve our runnability of the material and improve the consistency of that product as it's being produced. The second thing is for the customer's actual chemistry. When they buy an O35L56, for example, they buy it today or next month or next year, the chemistry that they receive for that product will be in a much tighter controlled range as compared to what AWS allows. The chemical composition of bundles designated to become super arc wire must conform to a tighter specification than is required by the American Welding Society. We take a bundle or coil of steel after it has been tested and we load it onto one of our payout stands. That's what kind of starts the actual drawing process. The steel rod is mechanically descaled to remove all mill scale from the surface. It passes through a chemical bath which prepares the surface for maximum adhesion of drawing lubricants and coatings. So once it leaves the borax solution, it goes through a heating tank where it actually will dry the wire uh, to some degree. And then that's where it actually goes down into the drawing process and enters our first die. All right, so when the steel green rod first enters the drawing system, uh, it's about five and a half millimeters. And from there, it goes through a series of dies. So depending on how big or small the finish diameter is, uh, determines how many dies it actually goes through. So at each die, it actually gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to your finished diameter. After copper plating, the wire passes through a final die, which produces a precise wire diameter and surface finish. All SuperArc products receive MicroGuard Ultra Surface Treatment to enhance wire feeding and arc stability. The operator, through the use of his computer screen, will track and monitor different variables associated with the drawing process. So variables like the diameter of the wire, the wear of the dies on the line, they can track each die and how fast it's wearing. They also track the temperature of the solution where the copper plating happens, and other items. So through tracking all of these variables and keeping them into the specifications that we expect, we can minimize the number of breaks that we have on the line and increase the consistency of the wire. The advanced technology of our drawing process allows us to line the wire onto the finished product or temporary reel at speeds over a mile a minute, depending on the diameter. Before the wire on the temporary reel is transported for finished packaging, the operator will take samples of wire from each reel and he himself will do checks for the cast and pitch. And then he will turn in another sample over to an independent testing area. The independent testing area will take the sample of wire, they will also check the cast and pitch of the wire, and they will also go through an x-ray process We'll check the surface of the wire to make sure that all of the lubricants and the copper meet our product specifications. Packaging is the last step in the manufacturing process, but it also adds to the value that SuperArc products offer. Packaging plays an important role in consistently delivering MIG wire to the welding arc. It influences how the wire will behave as it is drawn through the conduit and feeding system and also contributes to accurate wire placement in the weld joint. Uh, many of our customers that use SuperArc MIG wire are, have automated their manufacturing to either hard automation 
or in many cases robotics applications and the biggest disaster in each of those applications would be downtime. The QA efforts and the quality of steel that we use in SuperArc MIGWIRE manufacturing enhance the ARC performance and feedability. So what that means to a manufacturer is uh, we optimize uptime, minimize downtime, and clean up time. And that all means uh, more efficient operation for the end user. Many of our customers ask us why we put the time and effort into uh, the steel analysis, the scrutiny of steel suppliers, and all the QA checks that we do in manufacturing. And the answer is quite simple. We know that quality inputs mean quality outputs. We also know that our customers are relying on consistency in their operations. SuperArc MIGWIRE will guarantee reliable and consistent outputs. We are so sure of our SuperArc MIG performance that we have 100% satisfaction MIG guarantee. This means if for whatever reason you are not completely satisfied with SuperArc MIGWIRE, we will replace it free of charge. All of these rigorous manufacturing processes give our customers the confidence that SuperArc Wire produces high quality, high performance welds. Every time it is used, everywhere it is used, and for everyone who uses it. Trust SuperArc. Your welding just got easier.